We previously did a video where we talked about the different migration options that you have when coming from Automation Anywhere Enterprise version 10 or version 11, looking to upgrade to Automation 360. You can go to cloud, you can go to on-prem, or you could do a self-hosted cloud solution. Now, one of the benefits that we didn't really dig into is the tooling that's available when you migrate to Automation 360 cloud, hosted and managed by Automation Anywhere. So in this video, I wanna jump into talking about exactly what that tool is, how it's used, and I'll show you exactly how it's set up and run. Sound good? So the tool that I'm referring to is the cloud migration utility. So I'm gonna switch over to my virtual machine real quick. And the cloud migration utility is available to download and install on a V10 or V11 Automation Anywhere Enterprise environment. And what you wanna do is download this utility and install it on your control room server itself. Now, you'll definitely wanna do this when your server is gonna have some off time, maybe do it on a weekend, maybe do it on an evening where there's not a lot of bot scheduling going on or any runs. Um, but I'll have this link below. This is the details to how to install the cloud migration utility. Now, I've already installed it on the uh, server that we're looking at right now, and it is a control room for Automation Anywhere Enterprise V11. But if we flip over to the downloads page, you can find the download for that cloud migration utility right here. And again, this is at uh, apeople.automationanywhere.com slash downloads, and, uh, and you'll find that. And again, I'll share the link below. But you'll come here, you will download this uh, utility. It's, uh, I think, like almost 600 meg. There it is, 535. So you can download that and then install that on your control room. Now, I'm not gonna show the install process because it's pretty boring. It's just like a next, next, next install kind of deal. There's not a whole lot of options, but there are a couple prerequisites that get installed if your server doesn't have a lot of stuff installed on it. So again, I'm on an Automation Anywhere V11 enterprise environment right now. This is my control room server. My repository is here. Uh, and my database is referenced as well. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna show you this entire process. I'm gonna run this as an administrator, and this is again, the cloud migration utility, uh, whatever is the newest version here, it's version 3.0.1 at the time of this recording, but you'll wanna download whatever is the newest version for that. Now, the big benefit here is that because I'm migrating to Automation Anywhere uh, or Automation 360 Cloud, uh, I do have the ability to use this cloud migration utility. If I were migrating to an on-prem situation or if I were migrating to a self-hosted cloud, I wouldn't be able to use this, okay? If I'm doing either of those other two migrations, I'm gonna have to copy my repository manually. I'm gonna have to back up my database and restore my database manually. So you would have to do those steps yourself. If you are migrating from version 11 or version 10 to uh, Automation 360 Cloud, then you do have the ability to use this tool. So I'm gonna click get started here. Again, my control room is uh, not running like a ton of schedules or anything right now. There's actually nothing going on. Um, so it's okay for me to run and show you this. Now, when I actually start this utility up, it's going to automatically recognize the installation path for my uh, control room software. It's also going to automatically recognize the repository path. You'll wanna validate these and make sure these are correct, um, but they should be hopefully correct here. If you need to correct them, you can. And uh, just as a heads up, if you're doing this off of a clustered environment, you'll just need to run this from one of the nodes of the cluster, not every single one. And uh, I guess one other point to, to mention is that this will only enable you to migrate a single control room environment at a time. So if you have dev and you have test, and you have prod, uh, you would need to do those separately. You wouldn't want to do them all together. All right, for the database, it's also recognized uh, where my database host name is, the port, and the uh, database name itself. All of that is correct. Again, if you need to correct that, you can, but uh, all of that is correct. My database is also using Windows authentication, so I'm going to leave that checked. If you're using SQL authentication, you could check this and, and switch that over. And then it has a backup path. And this is just a temporary directory that's gonna be used locally as it's starting to copy files and then upload them to my target cloud environment. 
Now, while it's validating this and calculating disk space, I do wanna explain kind of where this comes in the process of doing your cloud migration. So you would start off, and we've got videos to cover all this, but you would start off with doing a bot scan, right? And we have a bot scanner utility that enables you to basically scan your repository of V11 or V10 bots. It will give you a score of like what percentage of those bots are ready for migration. Assuming you're above a 90% score, then you would wanna proceed with whatever the next step is, which in this case is requesting a migration license. When you request your migration license, that's when you're actually provisioning your cloud control room. And so once you've got that process done, you'll get an email that says, hey, this is your migration code, you're ready to go. And then you would actually start with this cloud migration utility. So I did wanna give that context, even though this video is primarily just about the cloud migration utility. Now, it's giving me an error just saying, hey, you're gonna be 70% of your total disk space is gonna be used. I was using more than 70% of my disk space before this video even started. So that's not really a big deal for me. Uh, it does have some details here. It says that I'm on 11.3.3.0, which is fine. Uh, there is um, a compatibility chart that's at docs.automationanywhere.com. So you can see what versions of Automation Anywhere Enterprise V10 or V11 are compatible with this cloud migration utility. Below that, we can see my control room file repository and control room database size. So I have 168 meg worth of uh, ATMX files and Metabot files. And then my control room database is actually quite small at 78 meg. So in total, it's 246 meg of uh, files and data. I'll continue. Now, like I mentioned, this is where your migration code comes into play. So you go through the process of provisioning your cloud control room, you will get a migration code. That migration code is 686 characters and it's a unique identifier that will enable you to associate your V11 or V10 enterprise environment with your target Automation360 cloud um, uh, control room. So I just put mine in, I got it in an email previously, so I just copied that from my other screen, I put that here. When I hit validate, it's gonna check to make sure that that's a valid code. Notice that it also recognized what my domain is, which is my control room um, target environment. So it recognized that. Again, that's that association happening. And then I can hit next. Now, at this point, it's actually starting the transfer of all of my data from my local control room to my Automation360 control room. So this is gonna include everything like my roles, my users, my bots, my schedules, my metabots, right? Everything that's gonna transfer over to my Automation360 control room. And that way, once I'm on that Automation360 environment, I can still use all of my existing users, my bots will move over, they'll still need to go through a migration process to move from ATMX files to Automation360 compatible bots, but those files will be there and I'll be ready to start that migration process once everything has been moved over. So I'm gonna let this run. I'll probably fast forward the next part of the video just because this will take a couple minutes, um, but it's gonna go through, back up my database, back up my repository that's been checked into the control room and maybe it's gonna go super quick. Okay, we might just let this run. I don't know exactly how many bots I had in here. I think close to, I would say 700 to 1,000. I did put a couple extra bots on here right before running this video. Um, so it's gonna package everything up. It's gonna move that to my cloud control room and it's actually quite fast. So it's going to upload everything right now to cloud and now it's done. So my control room migration is complete, at least from my end. Now what's gonna happen is those files are going to be loaded up into my target Automation360 control room. And then I'll be able to start the process of reviewing everything that was migrated and starting the process of doing the bot migration wizard to migrate my bots from ATMX files to Automation360 compatible bots. So if you are migrating from Automation Anywhere Enterprise V10 or V11 to Automation360 Cloud, be sure that you check out this cloud migration utility it's going to make your process of performing the control room migration significantly faster and significantly easier than if you were to do it manually. My name is Micah Smith. 
Thanks so much for watching. If you find these videos helpful, please be sure to like and subscribe for more Automation Anywhere content. Go be great. Hitting the like button on this video will make sure that your next bot build goes perfectly smooth. While that may not be entirely true, it is true that subscribing to Automation Anywhere will make sure that you don't miss out on any upcoming tutorials and bot builds. Go be great.